Welcome to WXTV, your online source for weatherization training. As part of our health and safety series, this episode will take a look at the complex topic of mold and moisture. It's a serious health and safety concern. We'll travel to the states of Washington and Maryland to look at three homes where weatherization crews encountered existing mold and moisture problems. They'll show us the precautions they took to avoid making the issue worse, as well as any arrangements they had to make to ultimately solve the problem. Mold is part of the natural environment. It's found everywhere and you'll find it in your air inside the home too. Mold inside the home can be a problem because it produces irritants and asthma triggers. One of the goals of our conservation measures are to make a house tighter and slow down the air movement throughout the house, uh, slowing down the heat loss. Uh, well, when we do that in a home that has a, a moisture source, like the basement in this home, we really need to be cautious and we really need to recognize the risk of trapping that moisture in the home more than it already is trapped. Uh, adequate ventilation is key and reducing the amount of moisture source is also key. We're in a home built in 1918 with a moisture problem in the basement as a result of uh, cracks in the foundation and site drainage problems. We're in the basement of this home uh, and the basement was one of the sources of the moisture throughout the home. We had le water leaking in through foundation cracks due to some improper site drainage. This is dried out now, but we actually had fungus growing on the bottom of this wooden shelf. You can see some of the remnants. To address the moisture problem originating down here in the basement, we installed a curtain drain around the whole perimeter of the basement, which drains into the corner over here with a, with a sump pump to pump the water out and evacuate it out into the yard, into a drainage field. When we have moisture in a home and we've done all we can to eliminate the source, we want to eliminate chances for that moisture to condensate out on the cold surfaces. That usually happens where there's poor um, or missing insulation or inadequate distribution of the insulation. Here in the bathroom, we've got a vaulted ceiling. We can see up at the top of the wall where a top plate is, we've got mildew growing. And I happen to know that this vaulted attic is totally uninsulated. And that's why we're seeing mildew up on the trim of the ceiling surface. We've got a cold spot up there where the human air in the bathroom can condensate out and allow mold spores to take root and grow. That's when it's really important to focus on spot ventilation in the more humid areas of the house, such as the bathroom or the kitchen or anywhere the moisture might be originating, maybe even a laundry room. We've installed a ventilation fan to exhaust moisture out of this bathroom. There was no exhaust prior to this, and that should solve the problem of accumulating moisture on the wall surfaces. Another common source of moisture in a home is a poorly vented clothes dryer. Anytime there's a leak, this warm, moist air is going to be coming into the living area and increasing the humidity with the potential of that water condensing on cold surfaces like a wall or a ceiling and resulting in some mold growth inside the home. In the northwest we have a, a heating climate but we also have a moist heating climate. We don't have the dry outdoor temperatures that we have in the northeast part of the country uh, or the, the mountain regions. The moist heating season that results from that means we have to be extra careful when we make houses tighter. Uh, we don't want to cause any moisture problems there may be a certain amount of moisture in a home before conservation or weatherization measures and after we make the home tighter and slow down the air movement that's when we're going to see that moisture accumulate 
and condense on walls or ceilings, causing mold and mildew growth. There's no amount of insulation that will eliminate a window's cold window surface from condensating water out of humid air. Moisture buildup on single pane windows or metal frame windows needs to be cleaned off regularly to prevent mold growth and also structural problems in the window framing from rot. Temporary weatherization measures such as uh, plastic window coverings can act as a storm window and help out quite a bit with reducing the amount of water condensating on a window. If you encounter mold during the course of weatherization work, you'll want to be familiar with DOE Program Notice 05-1. This sets some guidelines for working with mold. The Weatherization Assistance Program is not a mold remediation program. Department of Energy funds should not be used to test, abate, remediate, purchase insurance, or alleviate existing mold conditions. And keep in mind that weatherization services may need to be delayed until the existing mold problem can be referred to another agency for funding of remedial action. DOE funds may be used to correct energy-related conditions to allow for effective weatherization work and or to assure the immediate health of workers and clients. Here is a uh, typical Rockville house in Lincoln Park, Maryland. You can see some of the work that we've already done. You see the additional ventilation which was added to the roof and also there was a problem with the uh, flue pipes uh, coming out of the chimney where it was uh, not to code. In addition, we're going to increase the ventilation on the sides and make these larger. The cause of this homeowner's mold problem? An improperly vented bathroom fan. The homeowner hired a contractor to install one several years ago. She began to notice mold and mildew covering items retrieved from the attic, and eventually it got to the point that she could smell mold down in the living space. And uh, he was there at the attic, and we found some of the work or uh, the situation upstairs. The mold being this right here, and, what, and then. Um, yeah, we found a lot of mold, and as you can see, all throughout the rafters, as far as the eye can see, that pale film like on all the rafters is the mold. So we are increasing the ventilation. One thing we have to do is we're going to increase the ventilation on the side, which hasn't been done yet. Right. And the other thing we did Who's is that? found the fan that wasn't here, and we took it and we now have it going to the exterior so that getting rid of the sources of moisture in here is going to help alleviate the problem and get rid of it completely with some time. The other thing we plan on doing is, is setting up some UV lights in here on a timer that will kill any spores while this situation continues. Uh, you know, even though the mold dies away, it's going to produce spores. So if we can kill the spores, uh, at least it won't travel and get to other parts of the house. And this is all because of one bathroom fan. Okay, here we are on a quiet street in Silver Spring, Maryland. If you look on the maps of Montgomery County, you'll see that this was actually a creek bed where the uh, contractor decided to fill in and put this row of houses. Um, the audit has been conducted and the crews are starting to blow attic insulation today. The air sealing is probably something we're going to leave till last until we decide what to do with the water and mold issues in the basement. Okay, down here we are showing you the basement and you can see where the mold is growing up the walls. This is where a lot of the water comes in. What we're probably going to do on the other side of this wall as you looked at the front house is put in a six inch cutter slope it and have it take the water to the other side rather than dump on both sides. As you can see, the water travels through the basement because you can see the difference between the silted areas and the non-silted areas. As you look on this side, 
where, as you can see, the mold is like a meringue growing along the wood on the baseboard. So we're going to dry it up in here with a uh, system and hopefully stop this problem down here. When it leaks is when it has been raining long enough that the ground becomes saturated and then the water starts seeping in uh, through the concrete, I guess they're not concrete, concrete block walls and it may continue to seep in even several days after it has stopped raining. I have had since I moved in 34 years ago a dehumidifier in the basement. It's always been a damp basement because basements in this area tend to be damp. Um, but certainly there have been molds from sometimes water stands for several days. Um, I used to try to vacuum it up but since it just kept coming in and just kept coming in it was sort of a Sisyphus kind of task. I mean, there just seemed to be no end to it. Um, I do have lung problems. I don't stay down here much. Well, what we're looking at now is taking care of the water problem. We're going to be putting in um, some pump, a drain. We're not quite going to the French drain, but we're going to a draining system that will help to drain the water into the sump pump. We're also going to go with, instead of the standard five inch downspout well, gutters, we're going to go with a six inch gutter. Um, and we're going to change the angle from this corner here, which is pretty much our biggest problem, to draining on the other side to get away from this, this problem we're having right here. We're also looking at once we get this in place, we're going to drain the humidifier into the sump pump. In addition, we're looking at uh, UV lights to kill whatever spores that may be coming out uh, that will go on at a time rate in the evenings to kill it off at night and it won't be on during the day to mess with it. Hold on. It's a challenge. It's definitely a challenge. And luckily, we've got some really good contractors that can help take care of that. I'll be bringing in a subcontractor to take care of most of this work. Someone who has years of knowledge to help get that water out of here. Okay. What else are you doing to the house upstairs? And well, we're going to limit the house. We're going to not be doing any air sealing in the house because of the moisture problems. But we have added some more insulation to the attic. We've vented the attic as well. Um, we've got the bathroom fans working. There was a bathroom fan down here that was not working, and we have. A Another fan upstairs that we've taken care of. Uh, just some basic weatherization measures that we put in, low flow shower heads, aerators, things of that nature. A pipe wrap. Pipe wrap. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully when we're done, this will be a uh, story we can come back to and show our success if uh, Montana State gives us back a camera. Thanks, Ron. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Well, that's it for another episode of WXTV. When it comes to weatherization, the subject of mold and moisture can be a difficult one to address. On one hand, we don't want to do things that create mold and moisture problems for the client, especially if the home is already prone to such problems. On the other hand, what do you do if the mold and moisture problem already exists? Well, it's then that you'll likely need to work with other agencies to solve that issue. And thanks for watching. WXTV your online source for weatherization information, techniques, and expert advice.